Well, hello there everyone. UXW Bill here with you once again today. Got a quick little automotive update here. Just a quick look at some of the projects we've been working on. Our 98 F-150 was really starting to run poorly. Of course, nobody ever listens to me around here. I said before we ever put the replacement engine in the thing, change the plugs because they looked seriously scungy. And as you can see, if this thing would focus, I could put it in uh, manual focus mode. Watch this. Watch how clever I think I am here to do this. Car sets. There we go. Pretty normal looking wear on that spark plug, but I think you'd all agree that thing was definitely definitely ready to be replaced above and beyond a doubt. And the truck is running like a million dollars now. It's a thousand times happier than it was. All the other vehicles are pretty much doing their own thing. We've started and run the Volvo a little bit. But other than that, there's not too much to say because not too many of them have been going for a sympathy vote. But here we have the vehicle that is the subject of today's video. This is a vehicle we haven't seen in a couple of months now since the last time I would have talked about it and obviously I don't quite have this thing back in manual focus mode yet autofocus mode <laughs> oh, I may never get it figured out but we'll see what's going on here because this is long overdue for an update okay now I'm talking about this after I've been working on the car today so all of this is still relatively fresh in my mind it's just a couple of hours old when last I talked about this car in a video, it was absolutely running like crap. Wouldn't hardly run at all. And we have definitely made some headway on that very exciting subject. We replaced the coolant temperature sensor, which was bad. And that definitely improved things, but things still weren't quite right. So the next thing I turned my attention to is this assembly right here. This is the mass airflow sensor on this car. We have a brand new one installed and hooked up. And even with the, with the old one connected, the car wouldn't run for anything. At least it wouldn't run very willingly. You really had to push it and be rude to the engine. And it seems that we have some hornets buzzing around here, which I do not like. I think they're living in ranger danger over here <laughs> because I've seen them flying in and out of the gas store. And if I wasn't uh, a complete chicken, I would almost be ballsy enough to whap that fuel door and then run like hell. But I don't think I'm going to do that because those things have a bad habit of uh, appearing in very large numbers. And who knows, maybe as long as this car has been sitting, there might be some in there. <clears throat> but I digress. And i got a catch in my throat. The car wouldn't hardly run at all with the uh, previous mass airflow sensor in place. With it disconnected, it ran almost perfectly, but the ECM was using static values to let the engine run and that was not a perfectly happy situation especially as the motor started to warm up so now with that mass airflow sensor in place you can almost drive this car now one thing I haven't done yet and that some of you asked about was being able to hear this car run well I figured we could probably do that because even though it's drivable we still have a very rich odor from the exhaust it won't stay running unless you keep your foot in it a little bit and if you do rev it up particularly high, you get kind of a sulfur smell from it. I'm not really sure what to think. But one possibility that has crossed my mind, although it's not mentioned in any of the trouble trees that I've followed in the service manual so far, is a faulty oxygen sensor. Because I believe that sensor, which you're looking at right now, is at least as old as the car is. And I'm assuming it's still connected to something. Yeah, it's still got a wire on it, so that's a good sign. <laughs> But I really don't know if it's working properly. I also don't know if the ECM on this car is working correctly. After all, it is very nearly 30 years old. And you know how electronics go. After 30 years of being frozen, baked, and jostled around, I would say it's probably a little bit suspicious. The one thing that I would really like to see from this car is live sensor data, which the ECM, despite its primitive nature, does actually support. Now, the key keeper and I have tested the spark plugs and a lot of people have suggested, well, the Magnavox ignition system is not worth a darn. And they might be right, but we have a relatively new top half of the module and a relatively new bottom half as well. And at least as far as a neon-based spark tester is concerned, 
we have what looks like pretty even fire over all the plugs. We've also pulled out the injection rail. None of our injectors are dribbling or leaking into the motor and although we couldn't really tell for sure, they do all seem to be firing. GM recommends some kind of a uh, light-based test harness that we don't have and I haven't felt sufficiently motivated to build anything like that just yet. So all I can say is that I believe the spark and fuel delivery systems are working fine. Fuel pressure is definitely within the guidelines as expressed by the service manual. So really the only thing there is left to do is to go ahead and fire this car up. I was very surprised that the battery in it was still good, to be honest. <laughs> so let's go ahead and try this here. Oh boy, I gotta get in the car first, preferably without dying or maiming myself in the process. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I'll get you some engine operation, hush, from both the inside and the outside of the automobile. Here's what it does. You can tell that fuel pump doesn't sound very good if you listen carefully. We'll run it again here. Point the camera at the back seat. And it really doesn't sound very good, but it does, it does meet the pressure spec and it doesn't seem to be leaking down or losing pressure. So without any foot feed, here's what the car will do. It tries, it fires, but it doesn't manage to stay running. We'll do that again. Hey, that time it really wasn't trying too hard. Here's with a little bit of foot feed. The service engine soon light is illuminated due to the lack of input from the camshaft rotation sensor on this car. That is the only code it has thrown and it has been throwing that code for a long time because nobody's been able to bother with servicing the magnet. All right, a few underhood attempts, a little closer to the engine so you can hear what it's doing. Performance does not change a lot between warm and cold. Okay, here we are under the hood. I sincerely hope that the camcorder does not fall into the nether regions of the engine. Even though I only paid $8 for the thing, I'd still be pretty unhappy if I managed to lose it or scar it on something like a hot exhaust manifold. So here's the uh, key without any foot feed. Wait for the chime to quit. The EGR valve as well as the PCV valve both appear to be in good working order and although some of the vacuum lines are not hugely pretty none of them have any apparent serious leaks or even minor leaks that we can tell. Alright, we'll try it with a little foot feed now. As soon as I get situated. I'll go ahead and repeat that in case the engine drowned me out. Occasionally there is some popping or spitting in the car's exhaust. It's clear that there is a misfire condition for some reason. What's not so readily apparent to me is the cause of said misfire. Oh, look at that. I better do something with that air conditioner or it's going to be home to a bunch of hornets is my guess. So go around to the back here and we'll try to figure out a way but you can actually hear the engine's exhaust. I don't know where Furhead put the output on this car when he redid the exhaust on it. We'll figure it out and thanks to the magic of video editing, I'll be back in just a gif. And like I say, I know the car's got a misfire. I also know that you smell the odor of gasoline coming out of the exhaust. Now before you might say anything about this not being the right muffler for the car, you are correct. It's actually off of a much newer Buick Lucerne, I believe or lacrosse, I'm not sure. Something that showed up at Furhead's place of work, which was a body shop. So let's go ahead and crank this thing up. Now with 
up a little bit of foot feed. Concerns the trouble with this car, but as always, I would certainly be interested in hearing what you, the viewing public, has to say about the matter. Meanwhile, as always, I certainly do thank you for watching. Appreciate the time and effort that you watch, that you put into watching my videos, and I certainly encourage you to leave a comment if you should happen to have one.